Okay, girl, I need you to calm down. Okay, she's actually strolling. Great, great, great. The enclosure is prepared for the tarantula. On this tarantula is this markings. Okay, I can turn this like that. And then you can blur, blur. Today we will take two huge tarantulas out of these broken enclosures, as you can see. Completely broken, just like this one. <laughs> so we will take them out and move them into these brand new enclosures that we are also going to set up in today's video. As you know, those broken enclosures are actually my old design. Uh, back in the day when I used a plexiglass for the door. And the brand new enclosures are also my design, where I used the plastic parts that I personally developed and designed for the last three years. So it should be a major improvement. In this old and dry one, I have a Pizzateria Rufilata. You can only see her back legs and her abdomen, but you will see her fully once I get her outside. And in this one, this enclosure that is actually green, but also kind of dry now, uh, I have a Pezzoteria regalis female, huge female. And the reason why her plants are this dry is, you see I have a huge mold infestation problem in here, so therefore I wasn't watering the enclosure to kind of reduce that mold, but nothing really helped. Even if this enclosure functioned perfectly, I would still need to tear it down in order to get everything, all that mold outside. And the best thing is that once I'm done with rehousing the tarantulas into their new enclosures, uh, I will still be able to reuse these enclosures because I will be able to refit it with plastic parts and then these two enclosures will look just like these, you know. And I will do the same with this and this and all of these. So yeah, a lot of rehousing and remodeling ahead. Ah, there we go. To get that out of the way. Now I need big catch cups because I will take both tarantulas outside, uh, put them in the catch cups and then I will set up the new enclosures for them. So yeah, I forgot to prepare that. This one will do because these pokies have a really big leg span. So a classic catch cup like this can hardly fit a pokey of this size. So with catch cup prepared, I can take a poking stick and try to get the tarantula outside. We will start with that Pezzoteria rufilata, since I think she is a bit bigger. But oof, <laughs> the, the regalis, the other one, is prettier if you ask me. Oh, now you have, now you can see her really good and she is not happy <laughs> with the way I'm poking her. No. You see how she's threatening with her fangs and also with her legs. The reason why this poke has got these black and yellow markings on the underside of their legs is to look more threatening when some predator is trying to catch them. And they think that we are predators because, yeah, we are much bigger. But if you compare her with my hand, you see that she's huge. Okay, girl, I need you to calm down a bit. Mm -hmm. And those are actually all slaps. She's not really biting, she's just slapping with her, her front legs. And now it looks like we are going into a bolty mood. You see, she's no longer that much defensive, but she can actually bolt and, oh no, back in the defensive posture. <laughs> Maybe I can poke her, so I will try to poke her right here on the table. Oh, now she is. <laughs> she took my stick. Come on, girl. Do I really need to do this now? Ooh. Okay, we got her. And you see, even this catch cup is too small for her, kinda. But they can squeeze easily. I just slide the, the lid underneath and the tarantula is inside. Great, I will put her here so you can see her. One down, one to go. But this one could be a bit more trickier because She's actually inside of her cork bark, so I will need to tear this down. Oh, this plant is holding on to the cork bark really well, so just a second. I will need to cut it. One snip snip here. And now maybe... Okay. Also the root on this one. Check it out. <laughs> Can you see the tarantula inside? Yeah, there she is. Oh, but look at the mold. 
This is terrible. I think that I will actually take the cork bark on the floor and I will try to get her in the catch cup on the floor. The reason is I don't want to uh, contaminate my table with all the mold, which could result in mold outbreak in the new enclosure. I'm hoping that she will just go out. Oh yeah, she's already going out. See? Oh, <laughs> she pulled it. <laughs> Crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, just go outside. Probably she will now... Okay, she's actually strolling. Great, great, great. <laughs> it looks like she's a bit smaller than Rufilata, which is to be expected. Now same thing. The lid underneath and voila. Second tarantula down. Now we can focus on less exciting part of this video and that is setting up the enclosure. I mean, to some of you maybe this is also exciting, but I know that majority doesn't really enjoy that part that much but we need to do it regardless this one and here is the other one as you see i already equipped them with the backgrounds and the backgrounds are custom made by me this is just a styrofoam that is covered with uh, tile glue and then painted with paint for the concrete yeah or waterproof paint for the concrete just like every other enclosure, it all starts with the substrate. As I said a thousand times, it is a mixture of cocoa fiber and potting soil and uh, speg... No, not spagnum moss. Peat moss, yeah, that's it. I think that this should be enough. Maybe one more. Yeah, that's it. Second super important thing is a hiding place or a hide. In this case, cork bark tube, which is like the best thing for the arboreal tarantula because you see, you have a hole and tarantula can just go inside and hide. It is a perfect thing. This is not super important, but it will for sure improve every enclosure. And those are live plants, of course. I never used this plant in my enclosures, but I got it for free from my friend. So I will try it out and see how it will do. Although I think that I need to cut this because you see, it is kind of too big for this one. And maybe this, but if I cut that, no, I will just leave that. It's not, I can close the enclosure without a problem. So yeah, that should be all right. I hope that it will survive in the enclosure because it looks amazing. Now to water it a bit, a lot of water. I hate how when this substrate gets dry, it actually repels water at first, you see? It is kind of annoying. Now to grab some leaves from my leaf litter stash and just spread that around like everywhere and partially bury it like that yes 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 a bit here and just a bit over there Brr. <laughs> now comes the most important step the hole is sand for the texture we need to be super careful and be super precise with this because this gives the final ultimate look of the enclosure like whoa. and a bit over there and a bit over there and over there and everywhere like <laughs> it is not that important <laughs> but these are these are springy things you see <laughs> they clean your enclosure so make sure to get them in every enclosure that is a little bit moist i mean that gets reasonably moist a little bit more and the leaves just increase the general humidity of the enclosure and i think we are done the enclosure is prepared for the tarantula oh this plant is amazing i really hope that it will survive inside of the enclosure if it does i will make sure to spread it in some other enclosures gonna pop the top and we will move this beauty inside since Rufilata is bigger, I want to give her this prettier enclosure because I'm, I'm sure that the other one won't be as pretty just because of this plant. Girl, I have a surprise for you. After spending your days in that horrible, horrible enclosure that, that got super dry plants and everything is a mess, now you will enjoy this lush one. Ooh. You see, you have nice live plant. And what is amazing on this tarantula is these markings around her eyes that looks like a bandit mask, right? Just a little bit, a bandit mask on that carapace. 
Ah, sweet, sweet. Is this the thumbnail? Oh yeah, this could be a potential thumbnail. Go girl, explore your new environment. Yeah, that is a cord bark, your new house. You can go inside and hide immediately. Or you can stroll around and enjoy it a bit. No, it looks like she's actually squeezing behind the cork bark. Ah, whatever. You do you. I don't mind. I really don't mind with enclosure that looks so Ah, I'm loving it. I'm loving this. I'm gonna put it at its spot so we have more space at the table because also I need to bring another enclosure and all the enclosure from which I want to take plants. And that is this super heavy but kind of awesome looking bad boy because inside I have a real wood you see it's kind of heavy that is the reason why the enclosure is so heavy I can actually open this on top so you can see there is a hole on top and unfortunately there was a Pezzoteria Formosa inside but she she passed away like uh, two or three months ago and ever since then this enclosure is empty so now I will take the plants that aren't really in the best shape but I don't want them to go to waste and in the next rehouse video where I will refurbish those broken enclosures I will actually use this bad boy as a hide because I can't take it out although I will need to cut it a bit in order to fit those enclosures they are a bit narrower than this one like five centimeters narrow yeah i think that this is 25 while these are 20. so regardless the plant is going out now if only i can see yeah the roots the roots are here somewhere and they are super long actually <laughs> you see they go everywhere ah, there big root structure oh and this one is actually separate although it is really poor quality just one leaf now I can move this away and clean the area a bit so I can maneuver around easier. Once again we start with the substrate but since the whole process is completely the same uh, I will do this without any talking. Without talking, yeah. Ta-da! The enclosure is complete, with just one thing left to do and that is of course to add the tarantula. I'm gonna use the same tactic and in theory it should yield the same result. Oh, she is kind of the immovable object. Let's go girl, it's time to move. Move into your new house. Okay, I can turn this like that and then you can blur bro. Oh. <laughs> Instead of a slow stroll, we got a fast bolt, but it doesn't matter because it is contained. I mean, she is contained within the enclosure. You see, I also added just a little bit of that plant to kind of fill this hole because I just couldn't resist and simply not use it in this enclosure. Uh, this plant kind of looks shitty now, but once it roots a bit better and gets the moisture, it will raise up and then it should look much better okay girl enjoy your enclosure uh, just like the rest of you i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did thumbs it up and comment something if you want to support this channel even more there's a patreon page if you're new to this channel make sure to subscribe apple every monday sometimes on friday so see you again soon bye